The United States is cooling expectations ahead of the major UN climate summit. It says emissions targets may be missed. At the same time, a report says emissions by the world's 20 richest countries are rising. And for a closer look, we're joined by Ipek Gensu, a research fellow at the ODI, a global affairs think tank. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Ipek. Uh, firstly, rebound in emissions across the G20 countries after 2020. Not surprising, perhaps, but how concerned are you about the extent of that rebound? We are very concerned. Um, so we saw that due to the COVID pandemic, um, emissions were on the decline last year. They declined by 7% in 2020. But in 2021, we are seeing a projected rebound effect of about 4% um, of uh, emissions rise across the G20. Mainly, this is driven by the power and transport sector. As you might imagine, they're, they're um, up and running again. And in countries like Argentina, China, India, Indonesia, uh, the emissions are expected to, to exceed their 2019 levels. So this is very concerning, unfortunately. Well, APEC, we've seen this surge in coal use in China, in India, in the United States as well. And that's despite their previous promises to cut their coal consumption. So added to the increased demand that we're seeing for energy in light of this current power crunch, how worrying is this? It's very worrying. I mean, uh, the, the good news had been that we are seeing an increase in renewables in energy supply. They're projected to grow from 10 to 12 percent in 2021. Uh, but as you say, the coal consumption continues to rise. Um, it's projected to rise by about 5 percent in 2021. And much of this, as you as you mentioned, is concentrated in China, as well as the USA and, and India. Globally, China remains one of the highest producers and consumers of coal. Um, and recently, they made a commitment to actually phase out their financing for coal internationally, which is very welcome. But unfortunately, at home, they continue to invest in coal, and we are seeing the rise in emissions. Um, we are also seeing the rise in uh, and consumption of gas, which is another uh, concerning point. So these two fossil fuels together, we must uh, make stronger pledges and act on those pledges to phase them out. And what could be done then to encourage these countries or put pressure on them, in fact, to transition to low carbon economies? Well, I think it's knowing the risks of climate change and, and seeing them. So our report today uh, shows that G20 members are already experiencing firsthand some of the impacts of climate change and the whole world, actually. You know, this year, as, as alongside the pandemic, we've also experienced atrocities through fires to floods, droughts, extreme cold and heat waves. And all of this is coming with a price tag. So rebuilding this infrastructure uh, has been very challenging for countries. So I think knowing the price tag and, and seeing the impacts uh, at first hand is going to convince countries to act. And of course, also seeing the human impacts um, and lives lost as well as destruction of ecosystems. I think all of this is now going to hopefully try to make people act more strongly. But it's also knowing the benefits of the transition, um, seeing, you know, not just for climate, but also for air quality uh, and in terms of, you know, stabilizing uh, our, our reliance on fossil fuels and the price volatility of those, uh, you know, seeing how healthier lifestyles with less meat consumption, uh, with less car use and more uh, public transport use, all these things go hand in hand. So I think seeing some of the positive impacts of the low carbon transition is going to convince us. And finally, I think it's also um, it's also seeing the people on the street really wanting this change, uh, young people on the street, but also uh, businesses, industry, you know, all these stakeholders now calling for more robust change. Hopefully it will convince our leaders. Well, this year is such an important year for climate action, IPEC. I mean, COP26 is a chance for countries to extend, expand their climate goals. What actions must world leaders take in order to meet the 2050 goals that they have now? So our report shows that, uh, you know, power sector is a huge part of the emissions. It's uh, responsible for about 30 percent of G20's global greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, we really need to focus on increasing the share of renewables and expediting the end of fossil fuels. As, as I mentioned, this is the phase out of coal, but also of natural gas. You know, we have to be very critical of seeing natural gas as a bridge fuel because it really isn't in many cases. 
Um, and we have to make sure we don't lock ourselves by investing in more and more uh, natural gas. We don't lock ourselves into decades of, of uh, fossil fuels. We can see that you know, the G20's average natural gas consumption increased by 12% and it's projected to remain. Uh, so we really must tackle this issue as well as coal. But alongside the power sector, there's a lot that can be done in industry and buildings to increase efficiency. Uh, you know, we, we can increase materials recycling, reduce our demand uh, and make our houses and buildings much more efficient. Um, something which some countries are, are better at doing than, than others. Um, and same in, in the transport sector, you know, we really have to make the switch to um, electric vehicles because continued reliance on ground transport, which guzzles up petrol, uh, again, is going to really Im impact our targets. And finally, we should look at the land use and agriculture sectors. Again, we have to ramp up our zero net deforestation targets and switch our diets, making sure that we are taking land use and agriculture seriously. And if I could add one more point, which will uh, be cross-cutting all of this, is the importance of finance and where financing goes. So the finance section of our report shows that there is still high levels of uh, investments being made in fossil fuels, both through domestic subsidies, uh, around 50 billion a year for international finance as well. So we really must make sure the financing flows in the right direction so that we can ramp up our renewables capacity and really bring an end to an orderly and just transition to fossil fuels. Yeah, thanks, Ipek, so much for sharing your thoughts with us this evening. Ipek Gensu, Research Fellow at the ODI.